Hangover Drive today, we test ride the updated Bajaj N250 and we have a treat for sports bike enthusiasts as we pit the Aprilia RS457 against the Kawasaki Ninja 500 and the Yamaha YZF R3. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I'm Soinita. The Bajaj Pulsar N250 is the biggest capacity motorcycle currently in the market today and it is also the most powerful Bajaj you can buy in the country today. It now offers good value for money and has addressed all the previous shortcomings of the motorcycle. Here's Chris with all the details. Now the Bajaj Pulsar N250 is currently the biggest capacity and most powerful naked Pulsar motorcycle that Bajaj have out in the country. And well, it offers good value for money for the one and a half lakh rupees that Bajaj are asking for it. But it does come with its shortcomings. Now the year is 2024 and Bajaj say they have addressed these shortcomings mostly to do with the features that this bike has to offer. And we are out here today to find out if that holds true. Now on the visual front, the bike pretty much resembles the same as it did before but then again you do have new decals on the bodywork and of course you cannot miss that big upside down fork. Well, with this paint scheme it comes in the gold colour, the black motorcycle it's painted all black. Previously, a lot of people thought that the N250 looked a lot like the lower displacement N160 model with a short end can. And they really wouldn't be wrong because the pair of them, well, they have the same face and body panels. So, not a lot to visually separate the pair and more importantly, not a lot to show off that you're riding the more powerful, higher displacement model. So, you could see the new upside down fork and the decals as Bajaj's way of addressing this particular issue. The area that Bajaj have addressed is the list of features that this bike was always found to be lacking. Now, while the N250's LCD display might look like it was borrowed straight out of the updated N160 Sparks bin, well, this one comes with turn-by-turn -turn navigation in addition to Bluetooth connectivity. There's also switchable traction control on there now. Yes, a pulsar with traction control. And three ABS ride modes of road, rain and off-road which alter the levels of ride aid intervention. And they can also be switched off on the go. Moving on to the engine and performance aspects, well, Bajaj haven't made any changes to the existing setup, which is not necessarily something that all will see as a good thing. Now, the 249cc single-cylinder engine makes the same amount of power and torque as before and comes mated to the same 5-speed gearbox. So, power is at around 24.5 and 21.5 Nm of max torque. But it still is refined and very pleasant. It makes a nice a mid-range punch, but it isn't as peppy as something like the KTM, it isn't The motor throws a decent mid and top end punch, but it still feels like it's Pulsar you think performance and this is the most powerful pulsar to date, but it still feels like it's somehow been toned down a little soft, a little too comfortable, not like the teeth clench pulses of the past but now if you're going at it easy you really won't find the brakes too soft or any problem with the performance front because the bike feels tame and very tractable too so as far as the traction control system is concerned do you really need it on there the answer is no but it's a safety feature at the end of the day so there will definitely be some riders out there that will find it helpful with the way this bike suspension is tuned this is still the most comfortable pulsar you can get your hands on today. Now the riding position, like before, is very manageable in the city. Not too committed, not too sporty. But long stints on the sand shouldn't be a real uh, task. And of course, the new uh, suspension up front. Well, the front end, it feels really nice and light. Very manageable through traffic in the city. An altered caster angle and the new fork up front make this bike's handlebar feel exceptionally light. Allowing you to snake past slow or standstill traffic with ease. It's just that when you pick up the pace that you will feel the front judder a bit which can be a bit annoying on long highway stints. And that's a bit odd actually because otherwise the front end feedback is good through corners and you can correct your line through the corner at a decent clip quite well with the slightly broader section to your tyre. So overall, has Bajaj managed to make the Pulsar N250 more appealing than before? For sure they have. 
it looks slightly better than before and you certainly get a lot more bang for your buck in terms of features. It's definitely an improvement over the older model, but for some reason, according to me, it's still not quite what you would expect from a bike that brandishes the Pulsar badge. Now, the updated Pulsar N250 will set you back by 1,51,000 rupees, which makes it around, what, 1,500 rupees more expensive than the earlier model? And that's not a lot, considering what all Bajaj has thrown into this bike in terms of the Bluetooth uh, connectivity for the dash, well, the ABS, the traction control, it all makes a lot of sense. And, well, it does make this motorcycle a more complete package. So, well, Bajaj have held true to their word. So, if you're in the market for a quarter-litre motorcycle that's not too sporty, it has a decent amount of power, very comfortable and good to manage in the city, this one makes a lot of sense. It makes more sense than it did before, in fact. It's time for us to take our very first break here on the show, but coming up on the other side, we pit three very exciting sports bikes against each other. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Up next, we have a mega motorcycle comparison test for you. It's a motorcycle story that you have been waiting for for a really long time, especially if you're interested in the affordable sports bike segment. Right now, it's the golden age for entry-level sports bikes in India. With motorcycles like these, the competition is actually getting hotter than the weather right now. And if you are a thrill seeker, a motorcycle is looking to step up, you want to snag that bike which has the guts, the nimbleness, a bit of that razzle dazzle, all without having to sell your kidneys. And one of these is going to be on your radar. So which one will it be? Let's find out. Stepping into the ring are these three absolute belters, each with a heart that beats with a twin cylinder rhythm. A Kawasaki Ninja 500, the Aprilia RS457 and the Yamaha YZF R3. Let's kick off with their design and form factors. The Ninja 500. It's like Kawasaki has taken a dash of their racing heritage, thrown in the fierceness of the ZX4R and created something special. It's a masterclass in balance. On one hand, you've got this beast that looks like it's itching to tear off the tarmac, screaming speed and thrill. And on the other hand, it's got its approachable charm, not scaring off the newbies or returning riders. The sharp lines, modern touches and easy ergonomics on the Ninja 500, they scream, I'm quick, but hey, I'm here for everyone. It just wants to leap forward, but with that welcoming grin. And in comparison, the Aprilia RS457, it's like a catwalk model decided to hit the streets. It's got that upmarket Aprilia sass that manages to turn a lot of heads. And then we have the Yamaha R3. Now this can be seen as more of the classic motorcycle in this company because it doesn't really shout, look at me with my road presence and performance and all that kind of stuff. It's more of elegant and grandeur and poise with this motorcycle. So, it's more of a refined whisper rather than a roar. Now, let's talk ergonomics. That secret sauce that can make or break your love affair with a motorcycle. Sporty yet comfy, this one's got handlebars that let you hunker down when you're thrashing it around bends, but won't leave you feeling like you've wrestled a bear after a long ride. The seat, it's like sitting on a cloud, perfect for those endless road trips. And the foot pegs, they're just where you'd want them. No yoga poses required here. Now, the Aprilia RS457, it's the wild child of the bunch. It just screams, I mean business. That's how aggressive the riding posture is. It's made for attacking lap times. But when it comes to longer jaunts on the highway, that could be a bit of a grumble. The seat's firm, built for speed rather than a Sunday picnic. And let's talk about those foot pegs. They are high, keeping you on your toes, ready to dance around those corners. And then there is the Yamaha YZF R3. Now the right position of the Yamaha R3, very comfortable in my opinion. Uh, as you can see, decent amount of legroom and not too committed riding position. Now this might be the narrowest or the thinnest bike out in this comparison, but it just goes to show that size doesn't really matter because it's just so comfortable. The low seat height makes it easier than the other two. The seat's a perfect mix of sporty and snug. It's like your favourite breakfast chair, but on two wheels. And the foot pegs, well, they strike that sweet spot. Not too aggressive, not too lazy. 
just right for whatever ride you are on. The 451cc parallel twin engine on the Ninja 500 is like a symphony of power and poise. The acceleration, silky smooth, yet it's got enough grunt in it to get your heart racing. At the same time, the motorcycle feels at home whether you are weaving through city streets or cruising effortlessly on the highway. This machine isn't just about raw speed, it's about smooth, controlled power delivery, making it a great all-rounder. The RS457, it's like a coin snake ready to pounce. The acceleration, it feels ferocious, it lunges forward, it gets your pulse pounding. If you are craving an adrenaline fix, this bike has it in spades. The mid-range, it's like a catapult, making overtakes less of a maneuver and more of a thrill. This bike doesn't just respond to your commands, it leaps at them, matching its aggressive looks with equally fiery performance. Sure, the new emission norms have tamed the Zing a bit, but where this little champ shines is in its urban agility. Its tractability and nimble nature make it a breeze to zip through traffic, giving it an edge in the real-world conditions where it matters the most. In summary, the Ninja 500 balances power with control. The RS457 is all about exhilarating raw power. And the R3, while not the quickest, offers a balanced and enjoyable ride, especially in the urban settings. Next, let's talk about refinement, a facet that separates the great bikes from the good ones. Now, when it comes to the Ninja 500, the refinement is at a whole new level. You will love the kind of poise, the kind of refinement that it offers. Sure, it gets a bit rough beyond 7,000 RPM, but with its beefy mid-range, you will hardly need to push it that far. This bike is like a chameleon. It can loaf around town or tear up the tarmac, all while keeping its cool. It feels like the James Bond of engines. Soft, sophisticated and always in control. Then there is the Aprilia RS457. The engine's grunt is like an orchestra of horsepower, with every twist of the wrist feeling like you've just unleashed a pack of wild horses. It's the kind of bike that stirs your soul and gets your heart racing. Perfect for those who want their ride to feel like a symphony of speed. Now, although this Yamaha engine has been around for a while in the R3, well, it appears to have aged quite well in this particular company as well because, well, first and foremost, it is smooth and refined as I mentioned before, but it is quite tractable as well. The only thing it seems to be lacking is that instant power delivery because it doesn't rev as quickly as it does with these other two machines. Whether you're weaving through city streets, cruising on the highway or tearing up the track, it's consistently friendly. It's the perfect stepping stone if you're moving up from a smaller ride. If you're graduating from a 100 or 125cc motorcycle, the R3 is going to be your buddy. But if you're coming from something sprightlier, a 200 or 250cc motorcycle, and you fancy the idea of having twin cylinder engines, it's going to be the Ninja 500 or the Aprilia RS457, which are going to be more your speed. It all boils down to what kind of dance you want to do on tarmac. Of course, performance, ride quality and handling are important criteria when you're picking a motorcycle, but so are features, safety and value for money. More on that after this short break. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Now, we've been road testing the Yamaha R3, the Aprilia RS457 and also the Kawasaki Ninja 500 rigorously under uniform conditions and now it's time to pit them against each other in terms of safety features as well as value for money criteria. Let's talk brakes. The ones on the Ninja 500 are so good, they give you the kind of stopping power that lets you flirt with the laws of physics, knowing there's a safety net ready to catch you. Pushing the limits feels a bit safer on this beast. The Aprilia RS457 is a bit of a mixed bag in the braking department. Sure, it stops when you ask it to, but it's missing that extra oomph of the Ninja. The R3 is the calm one in the group when it comes to braking. Perfect for everyday ride, right? the brakes might leave the thrill seekers wanting just a tad bit more bite. But the silver lining, it's easier to manage while trail braking than the other two. So, for everyday heroics, it's got your back. In comparison to the Aprilia, the Ninja feels like a magic carpet. The ride quality is that good. Especially for those romantic two-up journeys, this is the better bike to go for. 
but you have to be careful about that low ground clearance. It can give you some awkward, unwanted jolts when you're riding on bad roads, fully loaded. Now the Aprilia, well, this feels like a proper race enthusiast dream because it has that nice Aprilia racing pedigree to it, especially in this company. Now the suspension might be on the stiffer side, but then again, you do have preload adjustable suspension at the front especially. And you feel nice and connected at all times on the road. Now the only downside is, well, on the long haul, on long rides, it might not be as comfortable as the others in this company. Then there's the Yamaha R3. It's like the friend who's always comfy to hang out with. The ride is supple, making Indian roads feel a bit less daunting. The pillion seat isn't a lounge chair like the Ninja's, but its higher ground clearance means fewer surprises on bumpy roads. Handling the 500 is like dancing with a well-trained partner. It's agile, but it won't throw you into a spin with extreme moves. It's the bike that will teach you the ropes without throwing you overboard. The RS457, oh boy, its handling is a dream for cornering enthusiasts, making every turn a laugh. Plus, those tedious Euro grips are like having super glue on your tyres compared to the Dunlop's plain donuts on the others. The Yamaha R3, on the other hand, is a very good handler too. Not too mild, not too wild. It's forgiving for the newbies but still keeps the old hands entertained. The chassis and suspension is in such harmony, even high-speed leans feel like a breeze. Now let's talk features and let's talk about the Ninja 500. Yes, I did call it a James Bond initially, but it doesn't really have too many gadgets. It's not very tech-savvy in that sense. You just get the bare essentials like an LCD screen and Bluetooth connectivity. Then there is the Aprilia RS457. It's got all the bells and whistles. A colourful TFT display, Bluetooth, customizable riding modes and even an optional quick shifter. Now the Yamaha R3, there's no fancy TFT, ride modes, traction control or even a quick shifter on offer. And instead you do get a rather simplistic LCD screen and there's no Bluetooth connectivity either. So in terms of features, this one is kind of gives you the impression that you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Safety-wise, the Ninja and the R3 are playing it safe decent brakes and stability. The Ninja gets a pat on the back for a slip and assist clutch as well. But honestly, even with the Aprilia RS457 feeling like a superhero with its traction control and switchable ABS, when it comes to real-world performance, the RS457 simply doesn't feel as safe and that is down to the shoddy braking. The Ninja 500 balances grunt with gustiness. The 457, with its thirst for power, isn't the most fuel-efficient, while the R3 sips fuel like a fine wine, making it a cost-effective contender. In terms of value for money, each of these bikes pitches its tent in a different campground. The Kawasaki Ninja 500 at Rs 5.25 lakh stands tall. It demands a huge premium, sure, but for that extra lakh over the R3, you're getting more muscle and a bit more tech. Then there is the Yamaha YZF R3, priced at Rs 4.65 lakh. It's like a classic rock album. It's got its loyal fans, but in a world where new genres are popping up, it might struggle to top the charts. The Aprilia RS457 with its price tag of 4.1 lakh rupees at showroom is like hitting the jackpot. It's the dark horse that galloped in and stole the show. Most powerful, feature-packed and let's be honest, it's got that look-at-me aura. When it comes to most bang for the buck, it's the RS457. It's like buying a tailor-made suit at a high street price. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Even my money would go to the RS457. So as the points tally, it is the RS457 that emerges the leader of this two-wheeled party. It's got the moves, it's got the looks, and it's got a price tag, which is going to make it a hard act to follow. enjoyed that story. Now, before we wrap up this week's edition of Overdrive, let me bring to your notice some exciting news for MG Gloucester owners. The Gloucester is now available with zero maintenance and repair costs and that is in addition to the manufacturer warranty that is already available with this car. On that note, we'll see you next week. Until then, goodbye. Many thanks for watching.